Hey, Vice Valley Christian Forum Church. Uh, this is Pastor Joel. Uh, as I promised, uh, we will be having uh, short videos on uh, Tuesday and Thursdays, and we're going to be uh, going through the Psalm 23 uh, verse by verse. So this week we're going to be looking at verse 1. But before we get to that, I do want to have one quick uh, announcement to you, bring your attention to the fact that uh, uh, later this week, um, the pastors are going to begin an online uh, prayer meeting of sorts. We are going to uh, gather together uh, through Google Chat or uh, perhaps Zoom um, and uh, ha host an online uh, prayer service. So if you're interested in praying uh, together as a people, uh, if you have prayer requests you would like to pray about, um, or if you just want to gather in prayer, uh, the pastors will be uh, hosting a um, prayer meeting uh, starting in one of the evenings this week. We're not quite sure when. It'll be Wednesday night or Thursday night, and we will send out information about that with a link that all you have to do is click on so you can join that meeting if this is something um, you want to do later on. All right, let's look at Psalm 23, verse 1. It's a very short verse. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Now, we don't know what's going on in David's life when he wrote this psalm, but it is striking that this psalm is not a request. David is not asking, Lord, will you be my shepherd? David is simply making a testimony. He, it's a witness. He is acknowledging that he's already known the Lord is his shepherd. When Saul tried to kill David, it wasn't because the Lord wasn't David's shepherd. And when David used his kingly power to coerce Bathsheba, it wasn't because the Lord had stopped being his shepherd. And when David tried to cover up that sin by murdering Uriah, and then when David suffered the consequences of his sin, it wasn't because the Lord wasn't his shepherd. And when David, some Absalom, tried to kill him and take over as king, it wasn't because the Lord wasn't David's shepherd. All these things happened when the Lord was still David's shepherd. Yet David still said, I shall not be in want. What is his secret? Now we all have burdens. We all have things we're working through. We all have sorrows and losses and regrets and sins. Sometimes, though, it takes an even greater burden perhaps a lifelong burden, or a life-altering burden, to teach us that we cannot carry our burdens on our own. That's when we realize that all those wants we have are always and have always been superfluous. So in a way, Christians should be prepared to lose. Loss is a part of life, and Americans are learning that in painful ways today. Garrett Bosma's funerals in two days and they can't gather with family and friends, like most funerals we do. So they can't share the grief with the community at large. And that is a loss. Weddings and the joyful celebrations are, are being postponed uh, or being turned from these grand parties into small backyard affairs. So these great events of family joy and life, uh, these are being lost. Vacation plans are in the wind. And even small things can be losses, like a sports season being canceled, uh, regular face-to-face -face interaction with friends we can't have, uh, just being able to sit in a restaurant and enjoy a meal and be waited on. We, we can't do that today. There's, there's a whole list of losses that we can just start ticking off, and, and all these losses make it easy for us to think that we're in want. Or... They can show us that this world has all these things and everything we want, but really not anything we need. So how much in want are we actually then? That in having all these things that this world can offer us, that even if we have it all, we are still left like a deer panting for water. Perhaps these losses that we are experiencing today in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak um, are that we are in fact a people who store up treasures in heaven. Maybe that is what we can remember, that, that, those who are, that we are those with an inheritance that can never spoil or fade. And like the psalmist, as much as we lose, we can still testify that our good shepherd is leading us to greener pastures, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim, because we aren't in want of any of it. Amen. Okay.